Uh, so I'll give a PowerPoint presentation about the boycott, divestment, and sanctions, or BDS uh, movement. Uh, starting with recent successes of the BDS movement, particularly after the latest Israeli attack on, on Gaza this last summer. Uh, during and since the attack on Gaza this summer, uh, the South African ruling alliance, which is led by the ANC African National Congress, endorsed BDS officially. The Bolivian president, Evo Morales, joined uh, many intellectuals and political leaders in Latin America endorsing BDS as well. Several Latin American countries withdrew their ambassadors from Tel Aviv during the attack on Gaza. Uh, uh, Kuwait excluded a company that's very deeply complicit in the occupation, Veolia, a French transport company, and I'll explain a bit about that later. It excluded it from uh, $2.25 billion worth of contracts in Kuwait, and in, in fact, Kuwait decided not to do any business with 50 other companies because of their involvement in the occupation. Uh, Veolia is involved in the so-called Jerusalem Light Rail, which renders services to the illegal Israeli colonies in the occupied territories in and around Jerusalem. Uh, since we launched a campaign against Veolia in November 2008, till now, Veolia lost more than $26 billion worth of contracts around the world. Uh, in the UK, Ireland, Sweden, the United States, and now Kuwait. Uh, the boycott has also grown tremendously in the occupied Palestinian territory during the attack on Gaza. Boycott has many facets. Uh, academic and cultural boycott, which I'll explain a bit about, were always popular in the occupied territories, but the consumer boycott was not, because it's a captive economy completely controlled by Israel. But during the attack on Gaza, even the consumer boycott in the occupied territories took off. And of course, there was a very important precedent set in the United States, in Oakland, California, where activists uh, and uh, dock workers blocked Israeli ships from, uh, for days in the port of Oakland and elsewhere in, in California. Uh, and it, it really reminded people of the South African days. In the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, blocking South African boats was one of the nonviolent tactics used. Even in Hollywood, we saw major artists like Viggo Mortensen condemning Israel's quote-unquote state terrorism in Gaza. A hundred Spanish artists, including Oscar winners Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem, condemned Israel's quote-unquote genocide. Major cultural figures in the United States, including Pulitzer winner Hunot Diaz and uh, Chuck D and Boots Riley, also endorsed the cultural boycott of Israel. In the UK, the leadership of the National Union of Students, which has seven million members, endorsed BDS as well. <coughs> Just a few days ago, Leicester in the UK joined 4,000 in Scotland and 12 in Turkey in declaring a boycott of Israeli goods. A uh, hundred international figures, including six Nobel Peace Laureates, called for a full military embargo on Israel during the attack on Gaza. An Avaz uh, 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 petition was signed by 1.8 million supporters and that a vast petition specifically called on major corporations like HP, G4S, Veolia, Barclays, and Caterpillar uh, to stop their involvement in the occupation and oppression of the Palestinian people. <coughs> the Non-Aligned Movement's Palestine Committee called for an Isra Israel's boycott as well. Hundreds of Swiss artists joined uh, the call for a military embargo on Israel, calling for cutting ties, military ties. A thousand U.S. and other anthropologists also called for a full academic boycott of Israeli universities, and they were joined by about 1,200 scholars in Spain. Hundreds of Irish artists signed a cultural boycott pledge never to perform in Israel or with Israeli state funding unless Israel ends its violations of international law. And in the New York Times, there was a, a, a full-page ad by 350 Holocaust survivors and descendants uh, uh, condemning Israel's massacre in Gaza and calling for BDS. Uh, academic associations like the African Literature Association, the National Women's Studies Association, and others joined several other so academic associations in endorsing a full academic boycott of Israel. UCLA was the last student government, the latest, that is, student government, to uh, uh, in endorse divestment from companies involved in the occupation but there were many other student governments before UCLA that did the same. In fact, now we have six out of nine 
student governments in the UC system, University of California system, that have called for a divestment. Again, reminding people of the South African days. Uh, a major shopping site, Gilt, dropped Ahava, an Israeli company that uses minerals stolen from the occupied Palestinian territory. Uh, they were dropped by Gilt after a, a campaign led by Code Pink, a feminist anti-war group. SodaStream, which hired Scarlett Johansson uh, uh, end of last year uh, to boost its image, lost tremendously since we started the boycott campaign against it. In fact, its stock, uh, sh the share price, uh, dropped by more than 50% since we started the boycott campaign against it. Uh, several of our partners in the United States uh, that, that uh, call for BDS have witnessed growth during the attack on, on Gaza. Friends of Sabil and the uh, US campaign to end the Israeli occupation, Jewish Force for Peace, and others. And in this era of uh, rocky relations between the US administration and the Israeli government, it's opening up opportunities, in fact, for the BDS <coughs> movement as Israel feels more and more isolated, and the US government is sending Israel a clear message, this is kind of a, a non-violent citizens movement that even we cannot stop. So uh, you, you'd better get your act together because even the US cannot protect you from such a citizens non-violent human rights movement. So the BDS movement has gone mainstream, largely. But that's not just during the attack on Gaza. Even before the attack on Gaza, we had reached uh, a, a lot of mainstream targets. In fact, Netanyahu, in his latest visit to the United States a few months ago, uh, attacked BDS 18 times, second only to Iran, as the biggest threat. <laughs> <laughs> and we take pride in that, that <laughs> a nonviolent movement should threaten such a strong and powerful country like Israel, uh, on par with a supposed nuclear uh, threat from Iran. Uh, in fact, BD, uh, BDS is now seen by Israel as a strategic threat. That's their mm -hmm. term which is uh, quite strange for such a powerful country to conceive of a nonviolent movement as a strategic threat. Um, in fact, uh, um, in June 2013, uh, is the Israeli government shifted overall responsibility for fighting BDS from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the propaganda ministry, to the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, which handles the Iranian threat, which handles relations with the United States, and so on. So that's, BDS Imagine is now handled by the big guys. Tsipi Livni, Israeli Minister of Justice, uh, uh, said the boycott is moving and advancing uniformly and exponentially. Those who don't want to see it will end up feeling it. And she said that last year already, even before Gaza. Uh, former chief of Mossad, Israeli external intelligence, Shabtai Shavit, one of the most renowned chiefs of Mossad, said we're losing the fight for support for Israel in the academic world an increasing number of Jewish students are turning away from Israel. The global BDS movement has grown. And this is a continuing theme, the fear in Israel of losing the next generation of Jews, which is a very, very important development that we should not underestimate. Uh, as one sign of the BDS movement going mainstream, uh, BBC has an annual poll called the Globescan Poll of International Public Opinion uh, over the last number of years, it has consistently shown Israel competing with North Korea over the third or fourth worst perceived country uh, uh, spot. Imagine, North Korea spends absolutely nothing on propaganda, Israel spends billions, literally, and they're competing with each other on, on, uh, on that level of uh, worst, neg most negatively viewed country in the world. In fact, uh, negative perceptions of Israel in, in EU nations, lest you think it's only in very friendly countries, uh, uh, even in the EU, Britain, 72% view Israel negatively. In Germany, 67%, France, 64 and Spain, 61% view Israel negatively. Some of the successes we had even before the attack on Gaza, a major one was with Bill Gates. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, after a short but very intense BDS campaign, was convinced to sell their stock in G4S. G4S is a British security company, the absolute largest in the world involved in the Israeli prison systems, <coughs> checkpoints, settlement uh, security, and so on and so forth. Uh, we've targeted G4S for more than two years, and we finally convinced Bill Gates to withdraw his investments. So he sold $182 million worth of stock in G4S. The second largest Dutch pension fund, PGGM, a $200 billion fund, uh, divested from all Israeli banks involved in occupation. So we're no longer just talking about small companies, we're also talking about the banks. 
the absolute largest pension fund in the world, the Norwegian Pension Fund, divested from two Israeli companies because of their involvement in the occupation. Danske Bank, the largest bank in Denmark, cut its relations with Hapo Alim, the second largest bank in Israel, because of its involvement in the occupation as well. The Luxembourg Pension Fund also pulled out of Israeli banks. Uh, several uh, construction companies in Europe pulled out from um, uh, private contracts, private bids, to build uh, ports in, in, in Israel out of fear of the boycott. Uh, the Israeli National Water Company, Apartheid Water Company, Mekorot, lost a $170 million contract in Argentina because of the BDS uh, movement. In the faith communities, the, the, the leading force was the Quaker Friends Fiduciary Corporation, uh, which divested early on from Caterpillar, HP, and Veolia, and that really opened the door to several other faith communities to consider similar measures. Norway's YMCA and YWCA fully endorsed BDS against Israel, and of course the Presbyterian Church uh, um, in, in June decided to divest from HP, Caterpillar, and Motorola Solutions uh, to pressure Israel, as the New York Times uh, had it. And that was an extremely important success because it took 10 years. We always joke that the Presbyterians move at a glacial rate, but they get things right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> The United Methodist uh, Church as well divested its pension fund from G4S after a, a long campaign by activists in the church and outside. Stephen Hawking, arguably the most uh, important scientist alive, uh, decided to boycott an Israeli conference last year after being appealed to by Palestinian academics, Israeli academics, British and American academics. The University of Johannesburg was the first outside the Arab world to cut off relations with an Israeli university after a long campaign led by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and several major presidents of universities in South Africa. The Teachers Union of Ireland adopted the academic boycott of Israel last year. Israeli Apartheid Week, which started in 2005 in one university in Canada, the University of Toronto, has spread to hundreds of campuses literally across the world. Berkeley decided to divest uh, uh, to last year after a long uh, battle, and so did student groups in Catholic universities. Some of the major Catholic universities in this country, Loyola and DePaul, uh, students by large majorities voted for divestment from companies involved in the Israeli occupation. Uh, across movement solidarity and alliances have developed as well. As you can see in the sign, we're Ferguson, we're Gaza, because we're human. The Ferguson-Gaza connection was made very, very clear in the last number of months. In the cultural sphere, we've seen a proliferation of cultural boycott initiatives. The most important of which was Danny Glover's uh, support for the boycott. The Hollywood figure Danny Glover endorsed a BD BDS completely. But several artists canceled performances in Israel. Uh, Massive Attack, the late Gil Scott Heron, Elvis Costello, Snoop Dogg, Zakir Hossein, uh, Shinid O'Connor, Ken Loach, and Vanessa Paradis. Some of them came out fully saying we support BDS, like Ken Loach, the famous British filmmaker, but others just cancelled their events in Israel and said we cannot in clear conscience, like Elvis Costello, play Israel while it's oppressing the Palestinians. And that had an enormous impact on the Israeli psyche that they started seeing themselves becoming a pariah isolated from the world, like South Africa was during apartheid. Angela Davis uh, uh, said it's not the image of the Israeli government that needs changing, but rather it's racist and repressive policies and practices of apartheid. Roger Waters, the famous Pink Floyd uh, artist in Britain, uh, is probably the foremost supporter of the boycott in the cultural sphere. The famous African-American writer, Alice Walker, said Rosa Parks would have supported BDS. <laughs> Marcel Khalifa, a famous Arab singer from Lebanon, endorsed BDS. Steve, the late Stefan Essel, uh, who was uh, a Holocaust survivor and one of the contributors to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, so really a historic figure in France, endorsed uh, BDS as well. Mira Nair, arguably one of the most famous filmmakers in India, uh, um, endorsed the cultural boycott of Israel, and so did Jewish American philosopher Judith Butler. The main motto in the BDS movement is that we want to end violence, but to do so, one must fight the root causes of violence, oppression. You cannot just say, I'm against violence, period. To end violence, you've got to fight oppression. 
and the main objective is to reach equality, that Palestinians want to enjoy equal rights like all other people on earth. And that's not too much to ask. As the late Edward Said used to say, it's equality or nothing. We cannot compromise on, on our right to equality, to equal rights. So BDS movement is based on the good old-fashioned principle that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Some people forget how important this is. Uh, and it was launched because the UN, under US hegemony, has failed to uh, uh, protect Palestinian rights, has failed to stop Israel's uh, building of the wall, let alone ending the settlements or ending any other injustices against the Palestinians. Uh, just very briefly, what are we talking about in terms of Palestinian rights? Who are the Palestinian people? The map to your left is the British Mandate Palestine, historic Palestine, and then the partition plan, the next map, 1947 partition plan, which would have uh, had a white, the white area would have been a Jewish state and the yellow area would have been an Arab state, so-called Arab and so-called Jewish, because neither state had the right to ethnically cleanse any communities or make it a, a, an exclusionary state. And then in 1967, Israel occupied the West Bank and Gaza, and the last map is the reality today. Palestinian existence, yellow patches, completely surrounded by Israeli-controlled uh, uh, colonies, uh, infrastructure, and so on. So the BDS call, the Border Divestment Sanctions call, which was issued by the absolute majority in Palestinian civil society in 2005, called for three basic rights, without which we cannot achieve self-determination, which is an inalienable right under international law. Ending the 1967 occupation, which includes the colonies, the wall, and so on. Ending Israel's system of racial discrimination, which amounts to apartheid, and I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. Third, and, and most importantly, recognizing the Palestinian refugees' right of return. Um, and, and I'll explain why it's the most important right. The Palestinian people are divided into three main parts. 38% only live in the occupied West Bank and Gaza, which includes East Jerusalem. 12% are Palestinian citizens of the State of Israel, and a whole 50, 50% of the Palestinian people live in exile, not allowed to go home because they're the wrong type. So the BDS movement addresses the three basic rights of the three main communities, and the occupation, and racial discrimination, and the right of return for refugees. <coughs> BDS today is a global movement that is anchored in universal human rights, and it's led by the BDS National Committee, BNC, which is the absolute largest coalition in Palestinian society. Uh, uh, it includes all political parties, all trade unions, women's unions, farmers, academics, students, and so on and so forth. Uh, BDS also has a very important Israeli partner, or partners, Boycott From Within, the Coalition of Women for Peace, the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, and other Israeli groups have, have, have also joined the BDS movement. Some people might dismiss them as small, too small to affect Israeli society, but in fact Israel is very alarmed that there are Israeli groups in the BDS movement to the extent that they passed a law in 2011 making it illegal basically to support BDS within Israel. Hanan Ashrawi, the Palestinian, one of the Palestinian leaders, said BDS is a legal, moral, and inclusive movement struggling against the discriminatory policies of a country that defines itself in religiously exclusive terms and that seeks to deny Palestinians the most basic rights simply because we're not Jewish. So we're talking about three rights. The 1967 occupation is the most obvious one, ending that occupation is the most understood, but Israel's occupation is no longer just an occupation. It includes colonization, ethnic cleansing, uh, 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 and, and other war crimes committed like in, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, we've seen is Israel's various massacres in Gaza le leading to uh, enormous human devastation, infrastructure, and massive killing of people innocent civilians mostly. And other aspects of the occupation include the wall, literally concrete oppression. Amnesty International in 2009 has revealed another aspect of the occupation, denying Palestinians access to water as a means of expulsion in the so-called Area C, the most fertile, uh, water-rich part of the West Bank. Palestinians are denied access to water so that they will leave. And we're noticing a phenomenon that's increasingly becoming so uh, prevalent in Israel that the fanatic Jewish fund fundamentalism taking over government, the Israeli Knesset, and society at large. Top Israeli rabbis, and now a US rabbi from Teaneck, New Jersey, have advocated genocide against the Palestinians. Very recently, a rabbi in Teaneck 
uh, called for uh, vanquishing the Palestinians in Israel, let alone the West Bank and Gaza. And that's a very serious phenomenon that no one should underestimate. Uh, using Palestinian children and other civilians as human shields is a practice also. That's a very important part of the occupation. <coughs> Segregated buses. Israel uh, decided to segregate its buses, not to allow Palestinian workers to use buses that serve settlers. So that's the 67 part of, of our rights. The, the 48 part, the Palestinians in Israel, uh, since the Nakba of 1948, the, the mass ethnic cleansing of the majority of the Palestinian indigenous <coughs> population from historic Palestine and the destruction of hundreds of Palestinian villages, some Palestinians remained and became Israeli citizens. But they, they're living in a situation where they're discriminated against in every major aspect. Uh, and in fact, many compare their situation with that of South Africa, despite differences. While Palestinians in Israel can vote, unlike blacks in South Africa, there are 50 plus racist laws in Israel that discriminate against Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, 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 legally. In fact, even the US State Department condemned Israel's uh, uh, racial discrimination against its own Palestinian citizens. With the latest Jewish nation state law that many, many of you might have heard about, which hasn't passed yet, but the government endorsed it, uh, the stamp on Palestinian citizens of Israel's faces says, uh, Israq Sub Bet, second class citizen. So in a way, it's, it's mocking this new law that it's giving an official stamp of Israeli apartheid, which existed anyway. A UN Committee for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination on 9 March 2012 came to the conclusion that Israel was violating the Convention Against Apartheid. South African Christian leaders also concluded that Israeli apartheid is, in its practical manifestation, even worse than South African apartheid. One aspect of this apartheid is land ownership, access to land. Uh, by various laws and policies, Israel maintains 93% of its land off limits to non-Jews. It benefits Jews only, and that is not just Jewish citizens of Israel, Jews at large. But Palestinian citizens of the state are not allowed on 93% of the land. In comparison, in South Africa, it was 87% for whites only. So even in South Africa, that aspect was better than our apartheid. Another aspect of the Nakba, uh, 1948 Nakba, that's hardly ever discussed in this country, is Israel's, or the Zionist militias, uh, systematic pillage of Palestinian books, tens of thousands of books, and their destruction to wipe out our cultural heritage. So we talked about the occupation, the racial discrimination system, and the third right, the right of return for refugees. It doesn't only affect the 50% exiles, it affects the huge refugee minority, even within historic Palestine. What is the 69% refugees? 69% is the percentage of the Palestinian people who are refugees or internally displaced persons. So you have the 50% in exile, and in the West Bank and Gaza, you have a 40 plus percent of the Palestinian population in the occupied territories are refugees, internally displaced persons. And even in Israel itself, out of the 1.6 million Palestinian citizens of the State of Israel, you have about 20% who are internally displaced persons. So those are citizens of the State of Israel who can't go home simply because they're not Jewish. So while the BDS movement is very much inspired by the South African anti-apartheid struggle and by the civil rights movement in this country, and certainly by Gandhi's nonviolent movement, it is first and foremost a, a rooted, contemporary, nonviolent Palestinian popular and civil resistance movement. So it's very rooted in our long heritage of nonviolent resistance, which is hardly discussed. We have not learned nonviolence from Martin Luther King or Gandhi, with all due respect to both of them. We've always had nonviolent resistance in Palestine since the 20s, 30s, against the British mandate, the onslaught of settler colonialism, and, and so on. And our resistance takes many, many forms. Education and learning has always been part of Palestinian resistance, and Israel has always <coughs> tried to prevent Palestinians uh, from access to education, like during curfews in Hebron, uh, um, in the Second Intifada, where those little schoolgirls were denied access to their school, and they insisted on, on <coughs> learning. Our poetry was always part of our resistance, and so was our dance. This is a picture from one of my dances. I'm a dance choreographer as well. 
Uh, so BDS takes various forms, but it calls for freedom, justice, and equality. One important form is the economic boycott, divesting from companies, uh, boycotting companies involved in occupation, and, and so on. The academic and cultural boycott, which targets institutions rather than individuals. So unlike South Africa, where the boycott was blanket against everyone and everything, the Palestinian boycott targets institutions, not individuals. So we do not call for boycotting Israelis based on their identity. We don't call for boycotting Israeli artists or Israeli academics. We call for boycotting their institutions because of their complicity in violating international law and human rights. Israel's first response to the BDS movement was launching the so-called Brand Israel campaign. Brand Israel, as it sounds, uh, aimed at rebranding the state so that it would be associated with scientists and dance and music rather than war and, and occupation and ugly things. Uh, as the foreign ministry officials in Israel said, we want to send those artists overseas so that they will present Israel's prettier face to the world. And of course, the faith aspect became very, very important in 2009 with the launch of the Kairos Palestine document, which is a, which is a Christian theological document that calls for nonviolent resistance against Israel's uh, injustices and in, including economic sanctions and boycotts. So that was the first endorsement of BDS by major Christian figures in Palestine. In fact, as, as some of you might know, Palestinian Christians agree on absolutely nothing. We have like three, four Christmases, God knows how many Easter's, but, but on, on, on this issue, every major leader of every denomination, Catholic, Protestant, uh, uh, um, Orthodox, agreed on, on this uh, Kairos Palestine document, which included BDS. The main principle there is that silence is complicity. You can't just stay silent at the face of injustice, especially when your tax money is contributing to the injustice. As the Methodist, one of the Methodist founders, uh, uh, John Wesley said, vice does not lose its character by becoming fashionable. So even if uh, uh, injustice is protected by the US Congress and it sounds very fashionable to continue with the occupation, it doesn't lose its character as something that evil that has to be stopped. So churches have a, a, an obligation and have a challenge to observe their ethical responsibility to disengage from injustice. So ending complicity is a basic moral obligation. It's not a heroic act. And that's a very important distinction that Martin Luther King made. And that's why in, in the title to this talk, I said MLK in Palestine. And I will address this very important aspect of the boycott. Before getting to that, one issue that came up at the Presbyterian Church Convention in June and at the Methodist Convention the year before and so on is maybe we shouldn't divest from companies involved in the occupation. We should invest in the Palestinian economy. Uh, and all Palestinians, including the faith communities, said, why or? You can invest to, 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 to help Palestinians steadfast while divesting, ending your involvement in injustices. Because your investment in companies that are building settlements and, and enabling the occupation is, is involvement in injustice. You have an obligation to stop that anyway. Whether or not you want to invest in helping the Palestinians, you have a much more basic obligation to stop complicity. That's a much more profound obligation to stop complicity. To make that point clearer, I drew this diagram of a master and a slave relationship where you want to invest in improving the slave's condition. But if you're investing in maintaining the master's enslavement, you'd better first stop that. Stop trading with the master first before, or you can do both in parallel. You can stop trading with the master while investing in improving the slave's condition. So going to Martin Luther King Jr., what he said basically is that boycott is withdrawing support for an evil system or policy. And if you, if you reflect on that simple statement, he's saying it's a basic moral obligation. It's nothing heroic. You should do that anyway. So BDS is based on the, on, on the principle that we should do no harm at the very least. If you cannot help the victims of oppression, at least don't participate in harming them. But what about peace? Especially in faith communities, people say, okay, yeah, it sounds compelling, but you know, what we are seeking is peace. Peace to the oppressed of the world is absolutely meaningless if 
devoid from justice. It means absolutely nothing if it comes without justice, because peace without justice is enshrining, is maintaining a system of injustice, institutionalizing injustice. Neither are we interested in improving injustice, making it look nicer and expecting the slave to be a bit happier, because that's still peace without justice. As Archbishop Desmond Tutu said, we do not want our chains comfortable, we want them removed. And he said that to the US Congress, when in the 1980s they were trying to relax apartheid to make it nicer. So he said, no, thank you very much. We don't want you to make apartheid better. We want to end apartheid. Neither are Palestinians interested in revenge. And there's a very important ethical difference between revenge and justice. Because revenge is reversing a relationship of injustice, where we gain power and we'll do to them what they've done to us. That's ethically problematic. We do not endorse that. We want to end all injustice against <coughs> everyone. So equal rights means equal, equal rights for everyone, not recreating a system of injustice. What about the anti-Semitism smear? Because that's one of the most frightening uh, 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 smears that, that prevents many people from doing the right thing when they know it's the right thing. It's very important to distinguish between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Opposing a political ideology that, uh, that is racist at its core, that, that views Palestinians as lesser humans, and that enables a system of injustice against them, has absolutely nothing to do with anti-Jewish racism. The BDS movement categorically opposes all forms of racism, including anti-Semitism. And we've said that millions of times, quite frankly, and we're very open about it. We do not welcome anti-Semites within our movement. In fact, there are several Jewish groups, including Jewish Voice for Peace in this country and others, who are part of the BDS movement and are doing excellent work promoting BDS in this country, in Europe, in Canada, and elsewhere. Uh, uh, as if they're saying, not in our name. Israel cannot speak in our name. What about balance? Some people say, yeah, it sounds good, but I want to maintain balance. You know, Israelis and Palestinians and so on. As Nelson Mandela said, you can easily be enticed to read reconciliation and fairness as meaning parity between justice and injustice. But he said that would be unethical. There is no parity between justice and injustice. There is no balance there. What about the relationship with the other? Some faith communities say, you know, rather than boycott, maybe we should promote dialogue between Palestinians and Israelis as the way to, to end this uh, conflict, as if our problem is a husband and wife kind of quarrel. They're disagreeing and they need a good therapist. We don't need a good therapist. We need to end oppression. It, it's much simpler than that. We don't need a good therapist, really. So we don't need what we call unethical dialogue. Dialogue to cover up a, a system of oppression. We need ethical dialogue which is based on viewing us as equals. So the most important question we ask in any dialogue offer, is this what's being offered, a bridge type of relationship or a ladder? In a ladder type of relationship, the oppressor is up there and we're down here and we have to dialogue while they're up there and we can't do that. They've got to come down or we go up so that we dialogue on the same level. That's ethical dialogue. This is unethical dialogue. The ladder type of dialogue is unethical dialogue. So to, to reach the end here, BDS has three basic operational principles. Context sensitivity, which means our partners in any context uh, tell us what they can do. We ask for an, a full isolation of Israel, but our partners are best placed to decide. We can only push for this much. Our partners within the Presbyterian Church said, we can only divest from three US companies involved in the occupation. That's the limit, and that's perfectly fine with us. We defer to their judgment what can be achieved. Gradualness, we cannot jump from A to Z. We've got to go one step at a time and build the movement from the grassroots up. That's a very important lesson we learned from the South African anti-apartheid movement, and also sustainability. We've got to sustain our victories. So at the end, BDS unites and empowers Palestinians and people of conscience everywhere in this non-violent action against oppression to reach our South Africa moment. Thank you. <laughs>